Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, I know it's the third day of FinCon. You're all, probably all very tired, and your voices may not be wholly intact like mine. I apologize. Um, but today, we're going to be talking about proper disclosures and GDPR. Um, I'm sure everyone had a nice little freak out in May about GDPR. And we're going to talk about why it's really not as scary as it sounds and the disclosures you should be including on your blog, especially with affiliate marketing. So raise your hand if you use Google Analytics. OK. Does anyone keep it up if you allow comments on your site? OK. Anyone building an email list? That should be everybody. Let's, I, you know, I'm sh there's another session on that, but that should be everybody. Um, have you guys, anyone started to dip into affiliate marketing? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, have any of you done sponsored posts or want to do sponsored posts with maybe some of the great brands out here, outside? Yeah, yeah. So if those, you answered yes to any of those, then this is going to apply to you. You need some disclosures on your blog. Gonna do another little interactive bit. Do any of you have viewers that could be based in Europe? Raise your hands if people on the EU can opt into your email list. They're able to fill out your forms. Is that possible? Exactly. Now, this one's probably less people, but anybody directly market to people in the European Union? Yeah, I didn't expect that. But if you answer yes to any of these, again, this is going to apply to you. Um, so who am I? I'm Liz Stapleton. I'm an attorney. I'm licensed in New York and Massachusetts, and I have been since 2012. I started within the FinCon community with my own personal finance site back in 2014, less debt, more wine, because I do have lots, a lot of lost school loans. Um, and then I also help bloggers and, and people newly self-employed um, figure that out at elizabethstapleton.com, because when I did practice, I worked in business formation, civil litigation, and business immigration. And so that's sort of my background. I no longer practice, but I keep up to date with this stuff because I'm very interested in it. I have a personal interest myself, and, uh, and so that's who I am. And so we're going to go ahead and dive into disclosures. And I, I have left time at the end for questions, so just heads up. If you have a question, write it down, um, and I will get to it. All right, so some types of disclosures you may need to be including on your blog include affiliate disclosures, which is probably what you guys are all most aware of but also privacy disclosures, cookie disclosures, and professional disclaimers, depending on your profession and what you're writing about. So sort of blogging disclosures 101, the FTC, um, which oversees consumer affairs, has guidelines in place of, of what's required for your appropriate disclosures. Um, you know, they want to make sure that you're being open and transparent about any monetary relationships you have with companies because no one likes to feel lied to or taken advantage of. And so this is all about just being open, transparent, and honest with your readers. Similarly, the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation that the EU put into place earlier this year, uh, it actually went to, in effect, 2016, the deadline was this year, um, requires that you share whatever information you're collecting. So whether that's personal information or anonymous information, um, you know, but you need to share why you're collecting it, what it is, so that they can decide if they want to hang out with you. All right, and then another one is professional disclaimers. So if you are an accountant or a financial advisor, or in my case, an attorney, you know, just because I write about sort of um, some information, like I have a post on how to start an LLC, you know, that's not legal advice. You know, I can't know for sure if that's going to be the right situation for you from writing one post. And so I have to explain that, yes, just because I'm an attorney, this is not legal advice. You're going to have to, this is meant to help you figure out if this is something you need to do or not, and you should probably look to your specific state for more information. Um, similar with a financial advisor, you know, say you're reading my post, but I don't know anything about you, so I can't say 100% that this post is gonna apply to you and you should do this. So you wanna make sure that you're just, you're explaining that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give you an example. I am an attorney, but I am not your attorney. <laughs> I am probably not licensed in the state you live in. Um, you know, I've got like two out of 50, so <laughs> keep that in mind. This does not form any attorney-client relationship. And this is not legal advice. This is general information to help you figure out what's going to be most important for you to focus on and what you should be doing. Because I am talking about GDPR, but there's states already on track to implement similar laws. California in particular, there's a lot of news on that, implementing similar laws. So it's the way things are going and why it's wise to kind of work towards compliance, but your state may have some specific laws already in place that you need to be complying with and you may not realize it. 
All right, so why is GDPR and all these disclosures a good thing? Because you're like, oh, people aren't going to want to click if I am telling them I might get paid. But it's, it's all about being open and honest, you know? It creates trust. If they know you're being upfront with them, they're going to appreciate it more. Um, and it's going to clear out the people that aren't doing it, right? Like the, the riffraff, because they're, they're not going to succeed. They're gonna, their readers are going to feel taken advantage of or lied to. And that's not an experience you ever want your readers or your audience to have. All right, so GDPR isn't as scary as you think. I know the like 20 million euro fine had everyone a little stressed out, but it's not zero to 20 million in you know, one violation. <laughs> okay, if you are at least making an effort to comply, that's gonna go a long way. The, that $20 million euro fine is really for people who are blatantly like, you know, screw you, I'm not doing this, you can't make me, and then they're gonna get fined quite a lot of money. You know, so chances are, even if something comes up and you get you know, notified, hey, you're in violation, they're gonna give you a warning, they're gonna tell you what you need to do, and so long as you do it within the time frame you're being told, you'll probably be fine. You know, but showing that effort, making an effort, really does go a long way. Um, so there's three things you should really be doing to, to make an effort to comply with GDPR. Um, and the first is, you know, let them know about cookies. You know, all those cookie banners, those plugins. Now, they're not all GDPR perfect, right? You know, but something is better than nothing. I'm going to be honest. The plugin on my site, I threw it up. I'm like, I need to find another better one, but I don't have time right now. And at least it's something. It's making an effort, okay? You need to have a legal page, okay? You need to disclose the information that you are collecting, anonymous or personal or whatever the case may be. You need to disclose if you have affiliate relationships. Um, and then the third thing is to make sure your email forms are compliant because you can't do the bait and switch with the content upgrades anymore because it's viewed as a bait and switch. <laughs> um, and so you can adjust sort of the way you do your offer you know, you can still use content upgrades to grow your list, but you can adjust the way you do your offer so that it's, it's being clear and transparent. All right, so here are some disclosures you should consider doing on your legal page. Um, a privacy policy. You know, how are you using their email? Because whether it's in, their co in the comment on your site or if they're joining your list. Um, disclosure for links to other sites, and that can include affiliate links, but that can also be if you're, if you're just linking out to another site. You need to say, hey, we're not responsible for whatever information they're collecting over there. You need to go read their disclosure policy. Okay, affiliate relationships. And some affiliate programs require you use specific language. Amazon is famous for this. They want you to use their blurb, you know. So-and-so is a affiliate of Amazon, meaning they earn a commission. You know, they have the specific language they want you to use, which makes it easy for you because you don't have to come up with something. But you need to include it here as well as wherever you're linking to things. Um, any professional disclaimers? Like I said, if you're an attorney or an accountant or an advisor. And then if you have sort of a membership site or a forum on your site or something, or even if you just want to do it for sort of the comments thread, you may want to consider adding some terms and conditions for your site to help sort of with codes of conduct and other information just to kind of keep your site, you know, in a happy place. <laughs> all right, and language matters because I bet all of you have skipped over reading a contract or something at some point because it was really boring and like tedious and all that legal jargon, right? Like, don't tell me for sure though, because it'll make me sad. Um, but language matters, keep it, keep it clear, keep it simple. You know, make sure your grandmother could understand it or your kid brother, you know, because, you know, I know what affiliate marketing is and you know what affiliate marketing is, but does your mom, you know, did, did you know before you got into this space? If not, don't use that language because it's confusing. Um, it needs to be easily understood. So, and this is just the perfect example because you can say affiliate link, but most people outside of this space, and if you're not writing in this space, don't know what that means. So if you're gonna use that language, you need to explain what it means. You can't just say, oh, this may have an affiliate link, read my disclosure. That's not gonna align with what FTC requires you to do in disclosing that relationship. So again, just you know, open, honest, transparent. That's really what you're working towards. So good rule of thumb, like I said, if your grandma couldn't understand it, it's probably too complicated, explain it. You know, it's better to be longer and, and more easily understood than to be short and not everyone gets it, okay? So, 
you need to then put these places besides your legal page. You know, a general disclosure for affiliate links. You know, if you're having posts with affiliate links, you need to make sure you disclose it. Um, Amazon requires a specific disclosure. So you may have two on one page if, if you have an affiliate link to like someone's course and an Amazon affiliate link. You need to make sure both of those disclosures are there. And then whatever disclosure applies for the content. So like I said, my LLC post, I have a disclosure saying, hey, I'm an attorney, but this is not legal advice. You need to kind of figure out what's going to work best for you. This is to help you get started, you know. Um, so just think about that when you're creating your posts. There's, there's different plugins and things you can do that, like, you check the box of which disclosures are displayed on the post. So you can certainly do that as well. All right. Um, one that's going to be necessary everywhere is the request for consent. And so this is GDPR. They, pretty much it revolves around, um, you know, getting consent to collect the information. And that's the cookie banner we're talking about. You know, so that's one way to do that. Other instances, consent is implied. So if you're selling something on your site, so if you're selling something that you deliver digitally, you have to get their email address to deliver the product. Okay, so you are implied to have consent to get their email address and email them for that. But that doesn't mean you can add them to your list, okay? So it's the purpose that they're giving you the information for, that's the limit of your consent, okay? Um, similarly, if you are, you know, selling physical goods, you need the address to ship it. You know, to, in order to complete your contract, your sale, you have to get that information. It's implied that you are able to use that information to mail them the product. Make sense? I like the nodding heads. Thank you. Um, and in most instances, the disclosure needs to be displayed before the link. And this is true in social media and email as well. And this is probably one of the biggest areas where people fail. Um, here's an example. So I pulled these off Twitter. I just went and looked. Um, so you can see this first one, hashtag ad. Ad is a term everyone understands. You know, they didn't do hashtag affiliate link. They did hashtag ad. And they did it before the link or whoever was paying for it, in this case, Flat Tummy Co. Um, whereas this bottom one, there's the link first and then the disclosure. And the problem with that is they, not realize, they may not realize that you are getting paid for that link because the disclosure is after they would click on it and leave. So that's why the affiliate needs, disclosure needs to take place beforehand. All right, here's an example from a blogger. And it just says, this post may contain affiliate links. Please read my disclosure for more information. Anyone want to take a guess of, at what's wrong with this? Nobody? You look excited. It doesn't explain what an affiliate link is, right? So unless this is purely for people that are in the affiliate marketing space, they aren't going to understand there's a monetary relationship associated with those links, OK? And this is an email example. So the affiliate links up top, and then they're like unsubscribe information, and then the disclosure. There's no way, you know, unless they scroll to the bottom, they're going to realize that there is a monetary relationship that the blogger has with, you know, the company they're linking to, the course in this case. Now, I know you're like, well, I don't really want to start an email with, I may get money if you click on things. You don't have to do that. It just has to be before your links. So this is an example of an email I do. So my email, I like start out with a hello, whoever, and I put some information in. And then I do a helpful resources section towards the bottom. It's not the very bottom, it's the middle, really. But before that, I do my disclosure, OK? And I make sure it's always before my affiliate links. And I don't include affiliate links in that first sort of introductory email part. So that way, I'm not like throwing a disclosure in their face. But I'm also staying compliant to let them know, hey, these tools I'm talking about that I use personally, I love them, but I may be compensated if you click and buy them. OK? Even in email, you have to do it. All right, so what happens if you don't comply? It depends, which is pretty much every lawyer's favorite answer, and I do apologize for that. Um, but if you, you know, say for the email or, or for affiliate marketing, generally it's not that you're going to be fined, it's that you may be required to pay back the money you earned. You know, like you could lose that income. And for some bloggers, that could be tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you never want to lose income. We're financial bloggers. We kind of like money. Um, Okay. Uh, other instances, it may be a fine. Are you vi it depends on what you're violating, right? Is it FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission? Is it GDPR? Did you make an effort? Did you not? Is it a slap on the wrist and you need to fix these things? So it just, it's going to be depending. But generally, if you're blatantly like 
no, I'm not doing this, you're gonna probably at the very least receive some, sort, some form of a fine. All right, but like I said, penalties can vary. It's gonna depend on sort of what was violated and um, to what extent you tried to remedy the situation or not. All right, so I do have some resources for you because I could definitely not cover all of GDPR in 20 minutes. Um, you know, so if you go to elizabethstapleton.com forward slash FinCon18, you can get these links. I have a very in-depth GDPR guide. It's free. It's just like a page. You don't have to like subscribe or anything. Although I would tell you if you were subscribing or not. Um, you know, but so I did want to give you time. This is usually a topic people have a lot of questions. So I wanted to make sure we had time for questions. So her question was, do I have to have a page that says legal or disclosure? Um, either's fine. So you could have like a privacy policy page, you could have a disclosures page, you could have a terms and conditions page. Those could all be separate pages. You don't have to do them in one. Okay, so her question is about growing your email list and what your form should look like and what you can say because we've all done the like get the freebie and, and sign up and that's a content upgrade and that's not really allowed. So um, there's a couple different ways you could do it. You could do get the freebie and then a checkbox that says yes I want to join the mail list. but you can't require them to join your mailing list to get the freebie in that instance. So it could be you're giving that out and your email list isn't growing. Another way to do it would be to just switch your offer a little bit and say, hey, subscribers get access to all this cool stuff, including this. Subscribe to my newsletter now. And then they're subscribing to the newsletter and you can deliver that freebie and you're not having to just give it away without getting those subscriptions. You could say, you, you just gotta frame it that way. Thrive Themes um, did an excellent article on kind of reframing your offer. Um, and on that note, you know, uh, double opt-in may not work as consent either because it, it, again, it depends on how you frame the offer because I use ConvertKit and I love ConvertKit. I don't know how many others do as well. But the way they set up their double opt-in, which was great before GDPR, was you basically, there was a button that said confirm your subscription, you know, and when they clicked it, it would download the freebie. Okay, and you could actually change that language. So you could say download the freebie and they'd click it and it was double consent or double opt-in, not consent. And you know, they got the freebie. But if you're not framing your offer in the way of subscribe, then that wouldn't work because you are requiring them to subscribe or confirm to get the freebie. So you have to reframe it or you need to do something else to sort of get the opt-in. So just because you have double opt-in doesn't guarantee that you've gotten consent because it all depends on how you did. Yes. Okay, so her question was, I work for some nonprofits that do not do affiliate marketing, but they do have a newsletter sign up. They are collecting email addresses. Does it apply? And yes, because under GDPR, you're collecting personal data. You're collecting someone's email address, possibly their name. So you need to have the consent to use it in the way that you're going to, so to send the newsletter. Um, so that's why when you're saying subscribe to newsletter, you're getting the okay to email them a newsletter. If you're saying subscribe to get the freebie, it's good consent to send them the freebie, but not anything else. At what point do you need to hire an attorney to do this for you? Um, well, if you can afford it. <laughs> um, well, I think, you know, if you're really nervous or if you have a very technical subject, it's very wise to do that because there are attorneys out there that will put together your disclosure policy, your legal page content for you. And if you can afford that, I think it's always a safe route to go because they're going to do their due diligence and you're going to have a little more, you know, probably rest a little easier. Um, but like I said, if you're making an effort, you can go look at other people's privacy policies as an example, right? To kind of try to figure out. Because the thing is, every website's going to be a little different, you know, in what they're using and the tools they're using because it's not just your email marketing service provider or that you have Google Analytics. It could be you use this payment processor. And how is it processing data? So you want to kind of look at the, a good place to start would be to look at the list of plugins on your site. And be like, okay, what possible information could it be pulling or, or, or processing that I need to just tell them on my site and say, hey, I use this tool. It does this with your data. So you don't have to get super fancy, but if you don't want to, because it can be a lot of work, you know, you could certainly hire an attorney. There's, there's a lot that sort of specialize in this area. Hashtag legal. Jamie Lieberman, she's part of the FinCon community. I know she has a template that she sells that will help you with that as well. Um, and then, I mean, you guys can go look at my page too. I don't care. <laughs> the disclaimer just needs to be before the link. So if you have three paragraphs without links, you know, and then you want to put in your disclosure, that's fine. So it just, it has to be before the, with affiliate marketing in particular, it needs to be before the link. Because they need to be able to tell that you have that monetary relationship before they would click. Because as soon as they click, they're leaving. Right, and they're not going to tell them on that page. Well, yeah, that, um, so his question is if the disclosure is in the first paragraph, but your first link isn't until the fifth paragraph, does that work okay? 
And it kind of, it depends on your disclosure, right? So sorry, it's an it depends question. Um, so I mean, if you're doing a general disclosure of, hey, this post may contain affiliate links, meaning I will be compensated if you click through and buy or if you click through, then that covers you know, the link in paragraph five, six, and seven. If your disclosure is the next link you see is an affiliate link, meaning I will be compensated, then that's only gonna cover that first link and you may need another disclosure further down, okay? But there's also, I mean, there's plugins that when you hover over the link, it does the disclosure too. So there's lots of ways to do this. Does, oh, do the plugins where when you hover over and it displays the disclosure, is that tend to ha do better? Um, so I'm kind of playing around with that. I, I can't say for sure. I don't know that I have enough data to say that's true. Um, I know other people have had some success with it, which is why I'm kind of playing around with it. So I, I can't say for certain with my experience though. But I like the idea of it because then it's just there. I don't have to put it into like the post. Any other questions? This has been helpful, I hope. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. If you have questions, you know, my email's there. You can check out the, like I said, there's super in depth GDPR guide because there's a lot to it and I can only cover so much in the 20 minutes. But feel free to reach out to me. That, that is like my main email. I respond to it all the time. Um, I'm happy to help any way I can. Thank you guys.